It's time for Twit, episode 231. John C. Dvorak, Patrick Beja, and I talk about the big Google exploit, why Microsoft wants to rent you Windows, and a whole lot more. Twit is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for this edition of This Week in Tech is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 231 for January 18th, 2010. Be kind, rewind. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Go to Meeting. Do more and travel less with GoToMeeting. Make your next meeting a GoToMeeting instead. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com slash twit. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash twit. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter at Audible underscore com. And by Carbonite, the leader in online backup. Back up your PC or Mac off-site, securely, and automatically. For a free trial offer, plus two free months with purchase, go to Carbonite.com, offer code TWIT. It's time for TWIT this week in tech. The stories are true, but the names have been changed to protect the ignorant. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Beja is here. From France. And Patrick Beja is not my real name, as you just said. It, well, to protect you. It's okay. Yeah, absolutely. We, you can use a pseudonym <laughs> here. Patrick is uh, uh, does the incredible Phileas podcast, which is an English language podcast out of Paris that is kind of like Twit Euro style, right? Yep. It's like the Twit of political and uh, international news, kind of. And, and you actually, do. you do other shows, too. There's a movie show. What, what's the site for all of that? Um, you can go to frenchspin.com to uh, see all of that, but maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about a new project that we're developing at sure. the end of the show. Sure, I'd love to hear about it. Also here to uh, to regale us with great stories from the good old days, John C. Dvorak. Yeah, the good old days. Yeah, Last John week. <laughs> Neither John nor Patrick went to CES, and that's why you both are here. Because <laughs> right. Well, we don't need to go, Leo. You were there. Oh man, I think I killed my staff. I think they actually uh, uh, are were this close to rebelling and leaving me there. As long as they didn't poison you, they may have. I came home and I was sick as a dog. So really, they, yeah, they may have. I always get From sick. What? Um, well, I had a meatball sandwich at the Vegas uh, McCarran <laughs> Field. That might have been a mistake. Jeez, those meatballs had been there. Since Wayne Newton was a headliner, I mean they—they <laughs> they could have been Wayne Newton for all you know. <laughs> may, you know, it's what's <laughs> left. It was either Siegfried or Roy. I'm not sure, but it was it was somebody's, and uh, whoo, they were not good. But I'm oh, back. John C. Dvorak, tell Leo about the mouse clarification. Oh, does this have to do with the fact that 25 years ago you said the mouse would never go anywhere? What is this? No, it just has to do with uh, Philip El uh, uh, Philip Elmer DeWitt uh, yeah. wrote that piece that got passed around, and I finally found the original column, and then I I this told is something him we that, talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, what but was no, the piece? This is what a did he more say? Interesting because he went back and changed his column in CNN and blanked out all the stuff that, that nobody knows where the, this phony quote came from. Oh, well, you can fill us in because not everybody listens to every show. What what was the uh, ini actually, uh, initial? Let me get the link and then uh, so I can look at it. Yeah, or so I can give it. I to remember the talking chat. about this, but I'll be honest. I don't really. I would fill you in myself, but I don't really remember. It myself. just happened like last night. So Philip Elmer Dewitt is a uh, writer. He was time. He worked at Time Magazine. Covers the Macintosh. Uh, I don't know if he's still at Time Magazine. I think he maybe still works for. He must still work for Fortune CNN because he went back and changed the column last night. So is this Microsoft upstages Apple's tablet? Is Fortune's Philip Elmer DeWitt nuts? That story? Today's no, proof that there's always someone Philip who doesn't get it comes in the form of Fortune's usually much more reliable Philip Elmer DeWitt. Under a laugh-inducing headline video 
Microsoft upstages Apple's tablet. Elmer DeWitt writes, Steve Ballmer's keynote at the CES show in Vegas ran for more than an hour and a quarter. But what got the most attention from the press gathered to watch it were the three minutes Microsoft CEO spent talking about his answer to the tablet computer Apple is expected to release in less than three weeks. <laughs> That's just... It was, if, if that was Microsoft's answer, we don't want to know the question. Virtually everyone on the planet who saw Balmer's presentation saw it the same way except for Phil. Elmer DeWitt writes, in a subtle dig at his competitors in Cupertino, he demo demoed the HP Slate with an Amazon Kindle version of Stephanie Miller's Twilight. The book's cover shows a pair of hands cradling an apple. That's uh, is that what you're talking about, John, right. or is this another thing he got wrong? No, this <laughs> here Google. <clears throat> you no, know, I just had Steve Ballmer's day. keynote at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas Wednesday ran for more than an hour and a quarter, but the press went here. It is here. It is Google De Dewitt Dvorak D E W I T T Dvorak, and it's about this eighth story down, January 1984. How critics reviewed the Mac. Oh, he. This is when he's talking about you. Yeah. Hmm. Now, if you see, he's changed the column, and I thank him for doing this, by the way. So this um, is this is a, another uh, column. You know, it is the twenty uh, fifth anniversary of the uh, Apple ad in the Super Bowl, which right. was uh, nineteen eighty four, January twenty second, nineteen eighty four. So he wrote a column in Fortune. Uh, and he's in which he says, in, in you know, anticipating the anniversary, I have some choice quotes from the first wave of critical reviews of the Macintosh. And I've scrolled down, you know, Byte says the Mac brings us one step closer to the ideal of computer as appliance. Creative computing, John Anderson, you know, said, you know, won't multitask, you can't use a Mac away from a desk, it's slow, not, not enough RAM. Bill Gates says anyone who could write a good application on a 128K Mac deserves a medal. But he quoted he quoted you. But see, that's gone. No, it's San Francisco Examiner John C. Dvorak. Keep going, it's in there. There it is. Now he's got some stuff struck out. Yeah, this is all bogus. Somebody made up. This is not a quote from you. No, that's why it's all X'd out. The only thing I ever said was the Macintosh uses an experimental pointing device called a mouse. There's no evidence that people want to use these things. That's Quite all famous. I said. I didn't say I don't want one of these new fangled devices. Then this is what they said you said. Yeah. And I'll say it in the voice they want you to be saying it in. The nature of the personal computer is simply not <laughs> fully understood by companies like Apple or anyone else for that matter. Apple makes the arrogant assumption of thinking that it knows what you want and need. Unfortunately, it leaves the why out of the equation, as in why would I want this? I don't want one of the. This is the tech grouch. I don't want one of these newfangled devices. <laughs> I, think I also think it's completely accurate. It, Apple it, it, Apple does make the assumption yeah, that, that it knows that what you accurate. want and need. That's completely now, true. Now, John, did you did you get a Mac early on? I had one right from the beginning. Yeah, in fact, I still have one of the one twenty eights that have all the signatures inside the box. Oh, that's worth something now. They Very had probably. everybody who was on the Mac team sign the uh, mold, and then right. uh, and then they made the mold. I bought a uh, a one twenty eight K Mac March of nineteen eighty four. Little after this review came out, a month after this review came out, I remember going to Macy's is where I got it because I had a Macy's charge card and it was two thousand five hundred dollars, and I wow. plunked down the plastic and I probably paid for that thing for ten years, uh, and y you know what? It in in hindsight, it was it was it was the beginning of the Kool Aid, right? Because y you know you couldn't copy a floppy without fifty swaps. You couldn't save because you had the Mac write disk in there. You'd have to create a document, then eject the program disk, save it, then put the program disk back in. There was no button to eject. You had to eject in <laughs> software, something Apple still does. Well, actually, I guess there's an eject button now on them. So what do you think now? Uh, here we are 25 years later. Will the Mac make it, John? <laughs> uh, it has a good shot at it. <laughs> How about the mouse? Any the mouse, there? I, by the way, I just wrote a column, I think it was in PC Magazine, and I think, you know, I think the mouse may eventually, with these touchscreen machines coming out, at some point, the mouse may be dead and this whole point moot. Wow. 
Now, by the way, you could retroactively I declare more yourself mileage correct from that column in terms of <laughs> bogus true. PR than anything I've ever done, including my dinner with IBM, which had a lot of legs. That's a very good point. Or you're singing Barney, uh, which apparently has one. The point Barney thing is well, that's in a different league. One point two million views on YouTube from John's three years ago recording a Barney doll singing "I Love You" in his bathtub, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No editing, no lighting. Why bother? Why bother? I don't even know why we do this show. I'm just going to record my stuffed animals singing and I'm done. <laughs> so let's talk about the big story of the week. And I'm not talking about the Conan O'Brien fracas. I'm talking about Google and China. Now, I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on, Patrick Beja, is to get a... Uh, a world point of view on this because in some ways people are saying Google is acting almost as an extra national as you know with a that Google has a foreign policy and I'm just wondering if how that plays to the rest of the world we're going to talk about it in just a second before we do though I want to thank one of our sponsors the folks at uh, Citrix who do go to meeting a great product for saving time saving travel with go to meeting you could do more and travel less it is uh, th th these guys do also go to my PC and uh, go to assist they're very good at remote access so the idea of go to meeting is uh you in fact you go there right now go to meeting.com slash twit you can install go to meeting on your computer mac or pc it'll take about i don't know three minutes i think just blowing his nose <laughs> this i think you know to be honest i think john's doing a costume change right now because his screen has gone dark <laughs> patrick i should have warned you uh, whenever there's and you you knew whenever there's a commercial john decides to take advantage of that moment to do something else if you go to go to meeting.com slash twit you can have meetings right from your desk you can do powerpoint presentations product demos you could do collaboration training works wonderfully and i want you to try it free right now 49 dollars a month for unlimited meetings as often as you want as long as you want and it includes voice over the internet and free uh, telephony Go to gotomeeting.com slash twit. Install this right now and let us know what you think of it. You can't go wrong. 30 days free. Go to meeting.com slash twit. We thank him for their support. John is still not there. <laughs> well, I wonder what's going on. So, so there we go. Oh, <clears throat> he's removed the, uh, pro the modesty panel. It's the cone of silence. <laughs> so... Um, I did a column in Market Watch that ran on Friday. If you go to marketwatch.com right now for people in the chat room, you can see there's a big, ugly picture of me there on the front page uh, under commentary. And that I wrote about this Google situation with a kind of a different take. I think it's fascinating. So just to recap, I mean, I'm sure everybody's heard this. Down a little more. Down a little more. <laughs> down, down. There it is. There it is. That's a good see? picture of you. It looks just like yeah. this. That Google's at risk by not leaving China. So here's the deal. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, this has been going on for some time. Google, in fact, uh, now we know, had meetings Christmas Eve. Uh, Eric Schmidt, who the story goes, has been uh, the strongest advocate of Google cooperating with the Chinese authorities, with being in China. They've been there for four years, filtering search results at the behest of the Chinese government, following the Chinese government's law, uh, we should say. Uh, but never gave any information about dissidents to China. In fact, it was smart. They kept their servers o out of China. They had those search servers there, but the Gmail servers, the doc servers were all overseas, so they weren't required to give any information to the Chinese government. And they managed, Unlike Yahoo, they managed not to. Uh, but starting at some point, and it and, and depends who you read, could be anywhere from 2001 to July, uh, Hackers started breaking into Google's servers in the U.S., trying to steal information about dissidents, trying to steal source code. Google, uh, around about December, discovered these intrusions, tracked them down. They, be they f clearly believe, according to a blog post that came out on Tuesday, it was the Chinese government doing it. They say, furthermore, that as many as 30 U.S. countries are have, have been similarly hacked, that... Human rights advocates outside of China's Gmail accounts have been compromised through uses of phishing, spear phishing, uh, malware, other scams like that. Not breaking into Google servers, but but actually hacking these people with targeted attacks. Uh, and essentially, Google said, "Enough is enough. If China it does this, 
since China has done this, we, we have been given no choice. We are going to give them two choices. We're going to say, change your laws and let us operate unfettered in China or we will exit. Is that accurate, John, as, as, as to what happened? Uh, that's what uh, is reported. I'm not absolutely sure that any of this actually happened. Why in not? terms of the China hack. What do you think or, happened? Well, I don't, I don't say, I don't, I, I don't know what happened because uh, uh, Google's not very forthcoming. They don't even have a press release out on this. But I do know this much. They had to get out of China because if they were going to be forced to give China special treatment for its search engine just so it could be there. Which they've been doing for four years. Yes, I know. And they, they, somebody finally figured out that if they keep doing it this way, because they were starting to gain market share on Baidu over the past six months to the point where they were almost getting up, up to 50 percent. They're up to 40, I think. Uh, they realized that they would be put themselves in a in, a, in a, a tremendous bind in the future if they if the majority of their income started to come from China, because at some point the Chinese could say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, you know, now that you're getting most of your money from us, we, we want to make mention something to you maybe you should stop take those anti-chinese websites that you show to people every place else in the world maybe you should stop doing that and around words, the world not just in china but around the world yeah and they could lord it over them or pull the plug late in the game which would sink the google stock and almost ruin it could ruin the company google has to go about this some other way so it has to get out of china under these rules very interesting that but, makes sense patrick does that make sense to you um, I'm not certain it does. I mean, well, maybe they could exit more gracefully in the future, but it seems like a pretty drastic uh, response to be saying goodbye to all that income just now with with 40 percent of the, you know, the market now in China and maybe more in the future. They're, they're saying goodbye now to all that money just because in the future it might become a problem uh, with uh, with censorship, the especially since. Everyone else is still doing it. It doesn't seem to bother everyone else. There must be some other component to this. You know, I, I think that there were internal divisions at Google. I mean, every, Ken Alletta and others are saying that Eric Schmidt always wanted to be in China, continued to want to be in China, even at that Christmas Eve mis uh, meeting, that Sergey Brin, one of the founders of Google, has never been comfortable with being in China, and that this gave Sergey the ammunition he needed to finally say, look, guys, we cannot do business with a partner that spies on us, that that attacks us, that's attempting to break into our servers. I think you're right, John. I mean, I think they probably did look down the road and said it, and it's only going to get worse. But I think that they this gave Sergey the ammunition he needed to finally win this battle with Eric Schmidt and maybe even the board. Who knows? Well, it, it gave them the excuse they needed is what it was. Well, and the thing, the one of the things we raised it in the... Uh, this Week in Google show yesterday, one of the things I raised is it's very convenient for Google f for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, they've managed to deflect kind of an important point, which is that they were hacked. Uh, you know, all the attention is on Google taking a stand, people applauding Google for, you know, standing up to China, which completely distracts from the bigger issue, which is data was compromised. The cloud, the cloud it was compromised. Was it uh, there, there was a number of attacks, but were they actually were, were the attacks successful? Were <laughs> yes, they Google admits they the were successful. They yeah, well, Google says no information about dissidents was right. released. Uh, so, the hackers never got into <laughs> Gmail accounts, but <laughs> they did manage to get some account information, mm -hmm. and they apparently got some intellectual property, including source code. So, no, yeah. there there was a successful attack. The Secretary of State Hillary Clinton released a statement that evening, Tuesday evening saying, <laughs> effectively, you've got to explain some explaining to do. She asked the Chinese government to explain itself, saying that Google's allegations, quote, raise very serious concerns and questions. The ability to cooperate with confidence in cyberspace is critical in a modern society and economy, end quote. And Thursday, she's going to have an address specifically on this. Google also says, this is according to uh, the blog posting by Google Chief Legal Officer David Drummond, I think it's telling that it was the legal beagle that announced this. First, quote, first, this attack was not just on Google. As part of our investigation, we've discovered that at least 20 other large companies, by the way, that number is now, I think, 30, from a wide range of businesses, and includes Adobe, by the way, including the internet, finance, technology, media, and chemical sectors have been similarly targeted. Second, we have evidence to suggest that a primary goal of the attackers was accessing the Gmail accounts of Chinese human rights activists. 
It, it does. You know, you were uh, asking what it, <coughs> the way we approached it here in France. And the first thing that came up, I think maybe it was early in the game when we weren't sure of the scope of the uh, attack and the or origin of the attack. Everyone thought it was China, but it, we weren't sure as much as we are now. Uh, the first question, question that came up was, is Google doing this for, you know, moral reasons? Are they uphol upholding their don't be evil um, yeah, you know, uh, that's a no good photo. question because they and put up with Chinese regulation for four years and now all of a sudden they get a spine. Well, it, it does. It, certainly there is an ulterior motive and it might very well be what uh, John is talking about that, you know, but I do think that there is also something else, which is somewhere in the company, possibly, you know, Ser Sergey, there is a moral compass in a way that there isn't in any other company. Because I don't think, given China's market, that it would even be a question at Microsoft. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but can you even imagine Microsoft thinking, well, you know what, the Chinese government isn't super playing super nice with us, so we're going to leave and, and leave all that pile of money on the ground. Somebody in the chat room is asking a good question. Isn't this a, a, almost a, a tantamount to an act of war? You know, what's funny is that, well, here's the funny thing. How's it an act of war? I go to China, visit, I don't like the place I leave. Ah. No, the act of war from China attacking oh, our yeah, infrastructure. Yeah. And I'll tell you, here's the funny thing is that we discovered, I remember this in September, that the federal government announced that uh, American infrastructure, the electrical grid, independent electrical companies, had been attacked, that they found... Trojan horses on many of those computers. It was a, at the time, I think it was widely ex, ex, suspected it was China. Of course, China has that, you know, had that operation hacking the Dalai Lama. Um, and, and there was not nearly the furor that there is now. It's as if, you know, hey, you can attack our electrical grid, which really is, is an act of war. Go ahead, but attack Google. Hey, <laughs> don't, mess, don't mess with the Google. I think it's well, a little you know, easy for they, Google at this they, point because they did they deflect from the 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 fact that they were hacked. It also, if Google's got, there's a lot of attention lately with people. And I don't know how it is in France, but I suspect this is there, the same there with people saying, "I'm not sure if we trust Google," and and I think Google needed something like this to rem, to kind of reassert their moral authority. Oh, you can trust us, so it's very convenient. Yeah, yeah, the whole which makes me think the whole thing is a, is a charade. But that said, yeah, by the way, we also do this. The Americans do this kind of stuff too. We're always nosing around other people's systems. That may I mean, be why we didn't say anything, sure. huh? But you know, the fact that the Chinese—I mean—is the Chinese what you're telling? What the what the end point message is is the cloud is not safe, and the Chinese can't seem to do this without getting caught. Well, or they were doing it a long time, and and Google finally f sussed to it. Yeah, that's actually what I also suggest in the column, that this has been going on. A lot of experts say it's been going on since 2001. To that, in that, uh, to that extent, in that I don't know. scale? I don't know. Mm. You know a lot of, lots of unknown, right? Now, in France, and I think this is true of the EU in, in general, this mistrust of Google is not new. In fact, the EU has been going after Google. In fact, the French government said it's going it's, to, on Thursday, that it was <laughs> thinking of taxing Google. Yes, that's a, a hilarious story, but yes. Um, <laughs> now, this is, this, is, this is, okay, now, I'm not one of those guys search. that says, France, socialist, bad, but this is a little bit of a stereotype. The French government is considering yeah. a Google tax that would help level the playing field <laughs> between internet portals that offer free content and the okay, music, so film, and publishing industries that lost revenue because of it. It's not exactly a uh, the government proposing this. Sarkozy it's a, pr sort of a, said it, didn't he? It, n well, not exactly. There's basically a study that uh, was conducted by a guy who works for the music industry uh, oh. about uh, the ways uh, that uh, we can improve the cultural uh, offerings uh, on the Internet. And one thing that he suggested, amongst many others, was this idea that you know, let, someone is making lots of money on the internet. Let's tax them to do something else, to, you know, to promote uh, <laughs> music and other things. Ah. And it is, I mean, it might get somewhat uh, proposed in a law somewhere in the government, but it's so completely asinine that the EU is never going to let that fly. Um, it's ridiculous. It has no grounds whatsoever he, about any... He, he also said the the possibly dominant position Google has acquired in the online ad market 
should be officially investigated for any unfair practices. There's definitely an anti Google, and I would suppose it's anti U.S. sentiment. I think right? it's, no, I think it is. It's this guy who is a uh, music industry guy who is anti. That was Sarko. That was your and president talking. That, okay. He is not the super biggest fan of the internet either. <laughs> Let's just, you know, he's the guy who pushed for the three strikes law. Um, but specifically which went, it, which went into effect this week as well. Yes, it, 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 it did, yeah. <sighs> it, it, it's a catastrophe. It's a disaster. But um, it's never going to be actually enforceable. Did you see that story about uh, the, the three strikes law thing? They actually, for their logo, through a series of missteps, ended up uh, using illegally a font that didn't belong to them. <laughs> so, I that mean, the, 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 the poster for the law the, broke copyright the law? For, the logo for the government body uh, called uh, Adopi uh, was designed by a firm who used a font that belongs to uh, Orange, you know, the, the, uh, the telecom phone company. company. Right. And they Oopsies. designed the logo with that font. Oopsies. And when they, the, the logo came out, it was like, well, Strike wait a second, one. pay for that? No. <laughs> so this is a disaster. The, the Google tax Ooh. thing is never, it's pr most probably not even constitutional in the concept. Why would you tax Google on the internet and right. not people, you know, the, the right. ad companies in, uh, in the street who display ads on, on posters and banners and stuff like that? It's never going to go. Well, I, w I think it's never going to go through, but it's, it, it pretty much shows you how uh, ridiculous uh, we are when we go about thinking of these things. And more than France and, and, and socialism, I think it shows how people in this country and probably others don't understand the way it works. They don't know what this Internet thing is and they still don't know how they can make money out of it. So they're thinking, let's take the money tax from it. the guy who actually makes money. Tax yeah. Why not? I like to see a per click tax. <laughs> just, it's not much, just a quarter quarter cent per click. One centime, one centime per click. Yeah. <laughs> Do the rest of the show with that accent. <laughs> no. That's why will but, stun me. Back, oh, I'm used to it. Yeah. It. yeah. But going, get, going back to the Google thing, uh, do, I have a question. Uh, do you guys. Does this Google getting out of China for whatever reason, if it's an excuse, if it's a good, you know, uh, point at this uh, at this point to to get out for various reasons, does it make you like Google more, or does it not change your opinion? Oh no, what? it makes me like Google more. I think, in fact, I would say if I uh, you polled the blogosphere on Tuesday, it was a resounding applause for Google. Right on, Google, you're doing the right, right. thing. It's Go the right for thing it, Google. Do, right. I, I can't get behind that kind of thinking personally. I like Google just the way I like Google. I don't like them more. <laughs> well, don't you think, you, though, you this think is Google? And, I have to say, way, and, and, and if a better search engine came along, I'd bail out in a minute. But now, now, first of all, let me underscore, of this course. is more than search. When Google pulls out of China, it's Google Docs. It's Google Mail. It's Google Voice. It's all of the, it's all of the Google tools. Now, you may say, yeah, Google's only, a, you know, a ha less than half of the search market. But let me tell you, the intelligentsia, the university students, they, in, in, in the cities of China, they use these Google tools heavily. That's why China's breaking into Gmail. They're trying to get the dissidents' email accounts. So that's a big deal. These people, uh, you know, that's a What if Google pulled out of the U.S.? What if you couldn't use Google Maps anymore? Would, you, would, would it be a problem, John? No. It wouldn't be a problem. Why <laughs> you, would it be a problem? You'd use MapQuest? Microsoft Maps. Okay. In, in that case, John, let me ask you this. Um, what does Google, at this point, with this getting out of China, which China was basically the only thorn in the, their side that people could point at and saying they're not doing that right, that they're not following their don't be evil motto. Everything else they're doing is either, you know, open source, data liberation front, everything they're doing is trying to be open and, and, uh, and you know, the way they should be doing things. D is there anything that you could tell Google, except, you know, the big spooky thing, we don't trust Google because they have all our info, which I agree with, but what else could they be doing to earn your trust and love? John's They're doing fine. They've got my trust and love. I don't like the, <laughs> I don't do the doc stuff and I don't do, I use the Google search engine. It's, it works great. But okay. I mean, is, is there anything more they could do to impress me? You might want to ask that question. I don't know. 
I think the Nexus phone is kind of neat, except it's so slippery. Ah, uh, it's not that slippery. I heard you talking about it being slippery. It's no more slippery than the iPhone. The iPhone was slippery, I've too. dropped it a couple of times already. I have, too, but the, I dropped the iPhone the first day I got it. You just have to hold on tight. <laughs> you can, See, that's the problem with the Nexus. When you hold on tight, it, you touch the screen, and because it doesn't have dual touch or whatever, it shorts it out, and you can't do anything. It does, by the way. So you have to hold it weird like this. No, no, no. The operating system does have multi-touch. The phone hardware has multi-touch. Hey, I heard an interesting rumor, and this was from a, a correspondent who does not wish to be named, who works at Google, who said, I'll tell you what really happened. Apple, with whom Google still has a very good relationship, said, can you guys not put multi-touch in the phone for a little while? Our patents for multi-touch are very weak. We don't want them challenged at this point. We'd like, and I don't know why That's Google... That's a good story. It's a good story. I don't know why Google would, would exceed, except that maybe they, they still like Apple, but... Um, it, it's, I can prove that it has multi-touch because it, you can use multi-touch on the keyboard. There are applications that support multi-touch. There's even a browser that supports multi-touch that you can put on the Nexus One. And the Droid, by the way, which also has multi-touch. I love this phone, John. I've gave, I have I have officially replaced my iPhone with the, with the Nexus One. You've really? actually moved over? You dropped the iPhone for this thing? Yeah, and I love it. So why huh. did they only sell 20,000? Well, I mean, you know... It's because they, they don't nobody have. Nobody knows yet that Leo loves it. They don't have Apple's marketing <laughs> clout. They, I mean, the iPhone. I think probably for most users, the iPhone probably is still. We we kind of debated this yesterday. Jeff Jarvis, who's kind of, uh, he's not a hacker type. He, he's uncomfortable with the with the Google phone. But Gina and I loved it. I think it's for people who don't want to mess with their phone. The iPhone's very straightforward, very simple. But if you want to have a, you know, uh, if you want to have folders on your desktop, or you want to have any kind of configuration capabilities if you want to have an open store if you want to have multitasking this phone it's so fast it's a gigahertz I like, processor no, i'm not saying i don't like the phone i just don't like the Beautiful. fact that it's slippery a <laughs> get and, a case and, and, well like when i get a case i'll be a happy camper i now, ordered a case right away i ordered a silicone case but the iphone is just as slippery it really is so the thing about it is the is that what i do like is that when you're doing sms you can just push the little microphone and then say something. Isn't that, that the coolest? And then you and don't have to deal with it works uh, great. Here, I'll typing. Do it. And the other thing is and it's pretty and it's amazingly accurate. And the other thing I do like about it, I like the turn by turn. It's very good. Yeah, it's got built in turn by turn GPS free. free. That when you arrive it gives you uh it shows Street you a picture view. where you arrived. It, it uses the Google map, uh, that, that little Volkswagen that takes the photos. The integration into uh, Google is, 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 is significant. I mean, it's huge. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to compose a text to you, John. Here we go. So instead of using the, the, the typing, I'm just going to speak into it. Hey, John, how are you today? Question mark. I am fine, period. Let's see if it did that already. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm sorry. You, sound, you could probably do it in French, robot. actually. <laughs> hey, John. How? Oh, look! It did. Are you too? It did it like in t like I'm a kid, like texting. <laughs> and I don't know well, why. At least it figured out your personality, Leo. Yeah. No, I've been using it for uh, all week. Uh, well, not all week. I got back from uh, CES on Sunday, so yeah, I guess all week. Um, for and I and I. Started doing the texting in the last couple of days using the dictation. I love it. Now it's not good for driving because you some you know have to fiddle with it sometimes, but uh, you know do a little editing. But I just I think this phone is spectacular in so many ways. I'm just really happy with it. Great camera, great video. Um, so will you be still be happy with it when the fourth iPhone comes out? Talk, talk to me then. What do you figure? No, Leo's fickle. No, talk to me then. Well, look, no, my job is not to be loyal. That's not my job to be loyal to a platform or a device. He's fickle. He just jumps on whatever bandwagon is right driving by. I try it all, and if something, I kept trying uh, iPhone replacements. I did the Palm Pre, the Storm, the Instinct, uh, even the Droid, and I never replaced the iPhone until this came along. I'm not fickle. I go with the best. I don't have loyalty to a device because my job is to tell you what the best is, and I and I don't even no, think it's the I best. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> so, God, laying it on thick. That's not. That's that's what it is. That's isn't that your job? So uh, I went back. You know, I still I like the Nexus phone, but here's another problem I have with it. So I did I did a, a kind of a stress test with it, and I cranked it way up. 
<laughs> Somebody in the chat room just said, be careful, Dvorak. He'll pull a Mike Arrington on you. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Dvorak. <laughs> so, uh, by the so way, I, I did that video test. still has one one thousandth the number of views of Barney singing in your bathtub. So I have. So here's the deal. Maybe yeah, I know should this is going to gall you for sing. weeks, this yeah, Barney thing. Yeah. But anyway, Barney. the uh, it, I, I loaded up. I put the Wi-Fi on. I put the GPS on. I, I loaded it up to the gills with uh, with everything. It lasted th three and a half hours w under full load, which I thought was kind of nice. But just under just the average use, it still drops dead after a day. The, the old Nokia N70, E71, N71, which one it is, that I normal my normal regular phone, that thing goes on for a week without having to recharge it. I'm always forgetting to give, charge it. Give it up, John. No, no smartphone's going to do that. I mean, it's got an OLED screen, which is a little bit more uh, economical, but it's not. no smartphone is going to go a week anymore. No phone's going to go a week anymore. That's just old school, man. You, you charge it every night. What's wrong with that? I, I agree. I, I that's, forget. That's... <laughs> you forget. <laughs> so well, here's John. You. What I do is, okay, I have a dresser where when I take off my clothes, I put my wallet and my keys on the dresser and I plug in my phone and then the next morning it's all ready to go for me. What we need is wireless uh, recharging. Like the, the well, there is such a thing. There is such a thing. I mean, you can, you can yeah. buy third-party... Uh, Things I, I don't have. I'm grumpy and I forget. I don't really have a problem with the uh, with that. I kind of expect that. You know, any smartphone's going to have to be recharged. It's it's, it's got to get through a day. That's kind of the minimum. And this, you know, I've this is about that. It doesn't get through the day. You know, it's about the same as the pre and the iPhone. They're all kind of like that, depending on how you use it. When you know, you, when you get a new phone, you turn on all the buttons. You do what Dvorak did, but under normal use, I find it's exactly uh, a day. But, but again, I, you know, I plug it in when I get to work. I, mean, I don't, I don't, it's not an issue for me. And it has an right, interchangeable well, battery. You don't great. like that? Get a new, get a second battery. Well, at least you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, I really think this is finally the uh, Android operating system coming of age. I guess that's my point. With 2.1, it has come of age. I liked the Droid a lot. I thought it was this close. And Nexus One gets, gets it right there. I was very impressed. Um, and I think that I would like to see uh, this do well. I mean, I do have some advocacy, uh, a little bit of juice for it, because if this phone does well, there'll be more applications for it. It is an oh, open... Oh, wait. I know what it is. What? Actually, this fishing. Week in Nexus. No, no, no. We already do it this week. Another weekend, podcast. No, no. Like, you're not doing enough. If, if I were going to do a podcast, I would do a cell phone podcast. You're right. I think that that's something that we could probably do. But, I, you know... And you're absolutely right. Well, I'm going to see what happens in March. Hey, you know what? January 26th, a week from Tuesday, if Apple announces something spectacular that's better than this, then I'll replace this. I go with whatever's the best today. That's not fickle. Is it 26th fickle. or 27th? Well, no one knows exactly. There's, it's oh. all rumor. Apple hasn't said anything. But we will be there whatever day it is. Well, I hope Google brings the Nexus phone in France so that we can tax it. <laughs> Another opportunity <laughs> for revenue. I don't think I don't think fickle's the right word. I try them all. I buy them all. I don't get free versions. I try them all, and uh, and if something's better, I tell you it's better. That's all. And if it's not, I set it aside. And I've been using the iPhone for three years, which is a measure of its success. But finally, I found something that is, I would say, as good as. For it depends on who you are. As I said, if uh, you know, uh, do you use an iPhone yet, John? No, you're still a Nokia guy. I use the Nokia, and then I also use the Nexus, and uh, I have to decide. I mean, I I would use an iPhone, but I I hate AT and T to such an extreme that I refuse to. And I I have, have principles. <laughs> okay, this is this is what worries me about the uh, rise of the Google phone. You can install an application from anywhere, well, which everyone has been saying, yes, this is the way we should do it. It's yeah. like, you know, a computer, you can do that. You don't need to go through the app store and we don't need to. We have how many tens of millions of zombie computers working for whatever, you know, ghost network whoever thought that was a good idea who wants to replicate this on phones on everyone this is going to happen you know it's going to happen guess if, what if you know the android is it already happened well there you go the uh the android marketplace to be a, a developer for uh, android you near ne merely need to sign up and uh that's it there, and there's no approval process unlike apple there's no approval process at all it's open and i think that that's a strength However, yeah, like it's also a security risk. 
Um, a person with the handle Droid09 uploaded into the Android market and was there for a day or two, a program called First Tech Credit Union. If you were um, a customer of the First Tech Credit Union, you might have downloaded it saying, oh, great, the, my bank has put up an Android application. According to a warning on the credit union site, the app was malware. <laughs> we recently learned that a fraudster developed a rogue Android smartphone app. It creates a shell of mobile banking apps that tries to gain access to a customer's financial information, said the bank. Please note this attack didn't target First Tech accounts. Accessing your account from your phone's browser still is completely secure. The app is down, uh, but this is exactly what you were saying, Patrick. This is the risk of having an open marketplace. And this is bad enough, but you can also operate outside of the, of the uh, Android market, right? If you put a link on a website... You can go there through the phone and yes. install the app. Now, to right. do that, you have to go in the settings on the phone and say, I am willing, and it gives you a risk, a security warning and everything, I am willing okay. to, to, buy, to get applications from third parties. But that's ironic because it's not, it doesn't take much to put one on the marketplace, So it's, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're given openness. I think probably I would, I would expect and I, would, I think it needs to be that Google or somebody makes kind of a vetted marketplace where these are secure but i like yeah, the choice and i think that's the key you don't have a choice really unless you jailbreak the iphone which is not only an onerous process it reduces its reliability and causes all sorts of other issues that's true but you do i think you do need a sort of uh you know label approved proven safe whatever reviewed uh, for the app so that people right. know that you can, you know, and maybe even only let people download approved apps if they don't change that setting in the in the menu. Um, because if you don't, pretty much you're going to start needing an antivirus and a firewall on your phone and stuff like that. It's going to be horrible. There has been a, a there have been a lot of complaints about uh, customer service, you know, um, there are people who got the uh, Google phone, the Nexus one and discovered that T-Mobile sucked. <laughs> shock you know which it does apparently uh, in some areas it works quite well here i'm actually getting 3g reliably i haven't dropped a single call which i can't say uh, is the case for the iphone here um if you buy i have to say if you if you buy um a, a t-mobile version of the nexus one not only will you face potential early termination fees from t-mobile but google has its own equipment recovery fee Three hundred fifty dollars if you cancel within the first hundred twenty days. It's not so good. Well, what was this? Can you back this up a minute? If you do what with T-Mobile? According to Engadget. Okay, I'm going to read the story. Ross Miller posted it on Engadget, January twelfth. Here's another reason to consider going the unlocked route with the Nexus One, which is what I did, by the way, because I want to be able to take it to Europe and so forth. In addition to having the AT and T non three G and international GSM option. As a number of people have noticed, Google has its own early termination fee equivalent here called the equipment recovery fee. In the terms of sale, they say they will charge you, and I don't know if they actually are doing it, $350 if you cancel within the first 120 days. It, this is in addition to any fees imposed by the carrier. Well, why T would anybody not just buy an unlocked phone then? Yeah, because T-Mobile's got its $200 ETF. So, so where is this coming from? Why it, do other carriers do no, that as well? No, we do in the states. There, all carriers have an ETF, which is usually one hundred seventy-five dollars or more. Uh, that is because they're subsidizing the phone. So this is for people and who you, buy the subsidized. Buy, and by the way, once you terminate, you should be able to get an unlock code for any phone you have. That's the law. But uh, very rarely uh, in practice. Well, nobody ever asked to do well, it because they right. don't get the fact that the phone's locked in the first place. Right. But I have but a number have of phones that oh, I've uh, well, I've usually given to the kids eventually, but that you know that are past their due date, and you just call them up and they give you the unlock code. And you unlock it, the phone, and you can do anything with it after that. Yeah, this one is, this one's unlocked. It was five hundred twenty nine dollars, but it's unlocked, and then there's and then you can get a month to month uh, T Mobile account, so you don't even have an ETF from T Mobile. So that I thought was a good, that's attractive. That's kind of my, that's like how it is in Europe. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the way it is in Europe. And you do have an ETF for the carrier, but right. you don't have an ETF from the manufacturer. Th that's, that's unheard of. I've never heard of that yeah. before. 
Hmm. That's, That's just bizarre. Strange. And I don't know if Google's enforcing it. Lots of complaints, though, on the boards about Google's lack of customer support. People were having trouble with T-Mobile, have no one to talk to. Um, Apparently, you can't well, call anyone at Google. You have to send an email, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they don't have phones. <laughs> they don't use phones. You use Google Voice. Yeah. And that's one Which, thing I love way, about this. Is, is one of those things I do like from Google quite a bit. I wish they would open this up because this is one of the most, the strongest selling points for the Nexus One. Maybe this is why they haven't sold that many. But because you still can't, you can get an invite maybe if somebody you know has Google Voice, but they, there's no way, other way that I know of to get a Google Voice account. I happen to have one because I was a Grand Central customer. And this works with Google Voice to the point that you replace the voicemail with Google Voice. You can even replace all the calling with Google Voice if you want. I have it set so the international calls go through Google Voice, which is a lot cheaper than T-Mobile. And then uh, I don't use T-Mobile's voicemail. I use Google Voice so that all the messages come to my phone, just like visual voicemail, plus text, which is something Apple doesn't do. So, I, you know, I think that's another selling point. Unfortunately, you have to have somebody, somebody emailed me and said, well, that's nice, but who has Google Voice? And not everybody does, alas. Um, I have it's Google Voice. That, you know, it's ask around. Number. Most people, you can get it. There's a, there's invites all over Are the there, place. I bought a few yeah, on either. eBay actually, <laughs> for like three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents. That's a good I got deal. A, I got an invite and got a, a, a U.S. number, and now there's talk of uh, Google Voice maybe coming to the uh, to Europe, and I'm afraid I'm going to be stuck with my U.S. number stuck to my account, and I just opened it no, to no. test it. No, they have a ten dollar fee. You can change it to anything you want. Ah. Oh. Thank you, John. You just saved my Google Voice life. <laughs> what, when you use your Google Voice, is it as if you were calling from the U.S.? I'm, I'm actually never using it. I did it twice to um, to test it, but um, that's cool. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, I'm really hoping they bring it to to Europe, but apparently, it's not in the books for right now. They've been talking about it recently a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's definitely one of the things that would put a phone over, you know, the iPhone if a service oh, like this was available. Apparently, yeah. they're telling me in the chat room that uh, somebody said, well, I just went to, you know, voice.google.com, requested an invitation, and I got one within a week. So I guess they are a little bit more liberal with these now. It's, yeah, they it, just needed to get their capacity up. It's an amazing product. I mean, we don't, we don't even have any long-distance service anymore. We just use Google Voice. The whole family does. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, because Google Voice is a long-distance service of sorts that's free. And there goes my AT&T. I don't have to deal with them anymore. The only negative I've noticed, have you noticed this? There's some let lag in the phone calls. There's a lot of latency. Nope. Okay, maybe this is I've never me. noticed it's that It's like ever. a half second Seriously. to a second. Okay. Nope. Mm -mm. Quality's good. Okay, this is this is what I'm talking about. What other company has improved our lives as much as it seems like I'm in love with Google, which uh, admittedly I'm a little bit, but they have really changed our lives a lot more than most companies in the past, you know, five, maybe even to 10 years. Oh, I'd say so. In fact, you could make a case in the States that uh, both AT&T and Verizon recently this week announced uh, a drop in the costs of their all-in-one programs, you know, all-you-can-eat programs. Mm. And I think that, that you can trace it directly to the fact that T-Mobile introduced this um, plan, you know, this this uh, uh, all-you-can-eat plan, very inexpensive plans that are month-to-month. -month. And I think that you can say that they did that because they knew they were getting the Google phone, and this is basically a plan for the Google phone. So, in a way, you can indirectly say that not Google is absolutely making a strong impact on the on the wireless industry in the u.s prices are going down because of them good article in mobile beat about the chip in the nexus one it's the audience a1026 voice processor chip this is a, an additional chip that apparently makes a huge difference in the quality it's a dsp in the quality of the phone calls um the real-time processing brings up the human voice brings down the background noise brings down digital echoes. Um, it's, it's so they actually it's, built in a voice processing chip in this. And by it's the got way, a microphone in the back of the phone. Yeah, it's got two microphones. Uh, yeah, so that's it, basically so like a, that. a noise reduction system that works like it does for these uh, high-end um, uh, headphones, right? right? Right. There's a microphone hole there, and uh, I don't I don't know if that's a that's microphone. That's a speaker. That's this is the speaker here, and then there's a microphone on the bottom. So I guess this is picking up background noise. That's kind of that's a clever design. I haven't noticed the sound sound quality one way or the other because I very rarely make phone calls. <laughs> for me, for me, I I do much more texting and emailing and all that than I do phone calls. 
Uh, let's see other stories uh, we're going to get to in just a bit. There, there is quite a bit of news. In fact, I'd love to get a uh, kind of a CES from the outside point of view from Patrick and uh, John. But before we do that, I want to mention our friends at Carbonite.com. It's a backup solution, a great backup solution that I've been using uh, since the bad, dim, dark day about three years ago. <laughs> When I lost 10 Gizwiz shows by accidental deletion and had to call Dick D. Bartolo and say, you know those great shows we just recorded? Can we do those again? And then right about the same time, it was the same mistake I made. I asked, I uh, <laughs> installed, uh, I turned on Windows Media Player and it said, do you want to look for sh songs on the hard drive? I said, yes. It, it cataloged them all and then, I thought it was like iTunes where if I deleted the names of the songs, it wouldn't delete the songs, except that it did. So not only did I lose 10 giz whizzes, but I also lost, <laughs> it happened twice, an interview uh, for Floss Weekly. We, <laughs> I, I lost it once. I called the guy back. We did it again. I lost it again. I had to send him a fruit basket. I felt so bad, and we did it a third time. I'm not going to say names, but it was after that that I said, look, i got to have a solution so that I don't lose podcasts anymore. And I discovered Carbonite.com. I've been using it ever since. So what happens, you can go there right now and install it. You go to Carbonite, C-A-R-B-O-N-I-T-E.com. You don't need a credit card. Just use the coupon code TWIT, and you can install it. You'll be able to try it free for 15 days immediately it starts backing up your data. It uses AES 256-bit encryption. You choose the key so no one can get into it. Scrambles it up. Then uses 128-bit SSL for extra security to upload it to their servers. Now, it's using your bandwidth. So depending on how much data you have, how fast your connection is, how much you're using the computer, it could take a little while to get that data up there. But once it's up there, it's automatically backing up all those precious documents, your, your, uh, your personal files, uh, your email, your photos. You don't have to worry, by the way, about size. I get, I back up gigabytes. As long as it's on the internal hard drive in your computer, you have unlimited backup, and it's less than 5 bucks a month. It's a great deal. I want you to try Carbonite free right now. Go to C-A-R-B-O-N-I-T-E.com. This is great for a laptop. C-A-R-B-O-N-I-T-E.com. Use the offer code LEO. You'll get two weeks to try it for free. Mac and Windows, by the way. And after you try... And I do. I, I really want you to try it first. Make sure it's something that fits your needs. If you decide to buy, we're going to give you two months free with the offer code TWIT. So use that offer code TWIT and give Carbonite a try. It's a great backup solution. It's not enough to back up locally. you got to back up off-site. And if you're backing up off-site, do it right with Carbonite. We thank them for their support of our network, our entire network. So, by the way, just one more Nexus One story. Did you see that Wozniak was doing an interview on NBC? And he said, his, when they asked him, what's your favorite gadget? He said, oh, I like the Google phone. <laughs> Steve Wozniak. <laughs> he did? Uh, yeah. He said, it's the latest one, and it's a non-Apple product. It just came out yesterday. I love Woz because he's just like, you know what? He's guileless. He's fickle. He's not fickle. He just, <laughs> he just says, t says it like he sees it. And, uh, by the way, later he said... But I oh, no, I still have two iPhones because he got a little bit of, uh, I'm sure, heat. I'm sure Steve said, Was, dude. He says, This is he, what we need up at the cottage, by the way, when I'm showing you. What's that? A case of this. Is that a Bordeaux Chateau Lynch bagel? <laughs> Lunch bags. <laughs> Lunch bags. Is that a good Bordeaux? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well uh, uh, don't drink it. <laughs> Whatever you do. Keep a cork in it, Dvorak, because I want to try it. I, you keep telling me how great Bordeaux's are. And I don't know if I've ever had a great Bordeaux. Patrick, oh, you're... You've had a couple of them. Though. All those Leoville wines are the great. The Leoville's are good? Okay. Okay. They were very good. Uh, and they're your wine. I mean, they've got your name on them. I know. I should drink more Leoville. It's the name of my blog. Patrick, do you drink Bordeaux? Do you drink wine at all? I'm the worst French person you will ever find. I don't drink wine. Well, I drink, you know, like everyone else. But um, you hate baguettes I too. <laughs> I hate the baguettes. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> a baguettes. I mean, that's unavoidable. I hate the baguette. It is delicious. disgusting bread. No, you love it, but yeah, who could not love a baguette? Yes, when it's just warm, it comes out of the oven in the morning when you go get it at the bakery. Mm, that and a little chevre show, and you're set. <laughs> that's it i'm ready 
And by the way, song? meatloaf and Bordeaux go together great. Do they? Somebody asked. We we, we did a meatloaf. Uh, our our Munchcast show was about meatloaf right before Twit. Now I'm so hungry. So what other news items do we have here? Well, there was this thing in Haiti. Did you see? Now Twitter went a crazy with the uh, Haiti thing. In fact, it's funny because two days before Twitter, uh, Ev Williams announced that Twitter had had its busiest day ever, just for no apparent reason. There was no big news story or anything. Just growth. And then, um, and he said, and tomorrow will be even bigger. And then the earthquake happens, and of course, Twitter goes crazy. There's emergency messages on Twitter. I don't think there's a lot of Twittering coming out of Haiti. Maybe some of the NGOs, but there's what, a couple, some some of it. And then what I thought was great was the immediate retweeting of you know, text the word Haiti to nine zero nine 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 and 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 uh, donate ten bucks to the American Red Cross. There was some misinformation that also got twittered, like that the phone companies are going to take a lot. They None of the cellular companies were taking any cut out of that. It all went straight to uh, the Red Cross. And they this were is, at the beginning. Uh, were they? Charging for, well, they were just taking the, you know, the charge for the message. Oh, all Which right. some people said was cynical. And then I think uh, there was a comment on BOL this week. Someone said, well, when you send, you know, a check to uh, a, a, yeah, you know, bank a charitable takes a few organization. Cents. Right. The, the, no, but I mean, the, the, the. Post office is not going to, you know, write off the price of That's the stamp. That's a good point. Yeah. In any case, I think that they wised yeah. up and they they they're not taking any any fee for that. And here's the great thing: so the, this is not the first time the Red Cross did this. In uh, in what was it? Two thousand? When was it, Katrina? Two thousand four, two thousand five. They did it and raised two hundred thousand dollars. After the uh, Asian tsunami, they did it again, raised four hundred thousand dollars. To date, in uh, four or five days since the. Uh, Terrible earthquake in Haiti, eleven million dollars. Went to eleven now. Eleven I it was six, like it's two 11 days. Eleven million dollars as of this morning. That's interesting. Well, I think it's, it says something. First of all, that people are texting more, right? More people are comfortable with that. I think Twitter has a lot to do with it. I have to think that the the word spread on Twitter. Um, and I did it. I, you know, I, I immediately did it. It's just so easy to do. So I, I, I think that that's kind of uh, encouraging. Yeah, that's yeah. a good gimmick. The, it's quite amazing. So, uh, the, the, the other amazing thing is that Twitter didn't go down at all. No. Yeah, something's yeah, going on there. Yeah, that's more amazing than anything. <laughs> we haven't had a Twitter is down story in a while. I think Twitter might be, uh, maybe they've solved this. Maybe they're reliable. Could it Looks be? like it anyway. Could it possibly be? Um, Microsoft says, this can't be right, that it's legal to rent Windows? Yeah, this is the big they, story that broke last week. Yeah, they, they're going to start a new SKU, le a rental SKU? That comes out of nowhere. It's weird. Why would they even... Well, first of all, why, I don't even understand renting. Well, it's like rent. Remember the olden days when they used to have vinyl albums, and like nowadays with the DVD store, you go in and you rent the DVD. <laughs> oh, so like, you make, you, but what? Wait, but I, what you rent? What? What? Like, okay, I'm going to go to the software store and rent Microsoft Word for the night. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Make sure you drop. Bring it back <laughs> after a couple of days. Don't forget to rewind. Who's going to rent Microsoft <laughs> Word for a night? <laughs> Don't forget to rewind the disc. Oh, yeah, I borrowed Windows 7 for the weekend. Maybe we had a great time. Now, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be for uh, companies that have projects that are going to take like a couple of months that they need to set up an office or, you know, a department for, and they need to rent the, the thing for a couple of months. And then they, I don't know, give it up or the uh, serial number deactivates or you can't use it in two locations at the same time. Actually, this doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. But it's a nice I, try. I have to think that what this really is, is Microsoft's always kind of wanted to charge a monthly fee. That's what it's really all about. Right? They don't want to sell you software. They want you to really think of your software as a subscription. And is this kind of, John, you think this is a way of getting that through? 
Well, yeah, you know, they may, I think that's part of it. I think they want to get people into a different frame of mind yes, exactly. and then uh, turn it into the, whatever the software uh, is you know, ephemeral this, this software as a service. Right. I think it's a huge blunder, by the way, you know, if Microsoft had its act together, every time something like this China attack on Google came around, Microsoft could make hay by saying, Hey, if you were using shrink wrap, you wouldn't have a problem like this. <laughs> I, I don't think anything. Microsoft wants to point attention out to its security uh, uh, issues, especially since I think one of the major exploits was oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Internet Explorer. Based, <laughs> this is right? how they cracked into all of these computers was through Aurora, the uh, well-known Microsoft flaw in Internet Explorer. And then that, another that one in Adobe. That is also present in 7 and 8. It's not just a 6 thing, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, IE 7 and 8. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in all of them. Hey John, what happened? Your picture went away. Are you? It got. Yeah, people were complaining that it got too dark, and I think it's because of a setting I did, and I'm trying to go back and, and unset it. It's like the lights went out in your room. <laughs> I thought light. I thought it was just that the, the sun went down and it was getting I'm dark. I'm going. No, I can't see. <laughs> can't see. Hey, so so how, out that I'm not getting is, anywhere with this oh. with this trick of mine to fix it. No, let me let me call you back because once you once you do what you did, I don't think you can restart the video. I don't know. Can you? Okay. Well, give me uh, one second to get to the tools. Put some clothes on, then turn on the lights. Okay. Oh wait a minute. Here he comes. He's coming back. Yeah, but see, I didn't get to go into the fix. Uh, yeah, you're still in the... Well, just, you know, you could turn on a light. Is it... I, you, you, just, I'm, it's, look, watch, I'm going to turn a light, a really bright light on right now. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing. Just so people understand, it looks like the warm glow of a fireplace across the room. I, I can leave this bright light on, I guess, but, you know, I know what, what the setting is. I know what I did wrong. All right, but... well, go ahead. You, 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 I'll tell you what, we could take a break. Everybody, you can go get a baguette and a glass of wine, Patrick. John can fiddle with his uh, settings. And I can go base my meat. Go, are you making dinner tonight, John? No, I'm just going to eat. You, I'm going to, no. We did a, I, we just did a podcast about meatloaf, as I mentioned, and I am famished. I just, it huh. got my mouth. Do they eat meatloaf in France? Probably not. They probably turn their nose up. At it's called a terrine. Uh, oh, a terrine. It's like pate. Kind of. Yeah, kind of a little bit. We have uh, um, Subway meatballs, though. That's delicious. <laughs> Do not eat. That is so Ooh, sad. I am so bummed out. Do you have Quiznos? Is there a Quiznos? Is there Quiznos in France? Uh, I don't think so, no. I don't know that one. <laughs> At least there's hope yet. Wendy's? Taco um, Bell? No, not in France. I know McDonald's have, is everywhere, uh, but it's so funny because the McDonald's, I went to have a Big, a big Mac, <laughs> and you, your secret sauce is different. It, it's, that that can't it? be. It's it. Oh, it can be. It's very. The taste of a French Big Mac is nothing like an. I had one in Beijing. It's exactly like an American Big Mac. Exactly. In fact, you know what the well, big that, the big fast food in China is? Kentucky Fried Chicken. They love their KFC. Is it, what, KFC. We have a few of those. But, yeah. Uh, the, the the big thing in France in McDonald's is the um, Royal Deluxe, which oh. is especially done for French. Yeah, we don't even uh, have that. Tastes. It's yeah, a it's like more. A, and Emperor. girl fit for Louis XIV. <laughs> <laughs> the Royal Deluxe. There, that looks good, John. That's a big improvement. I, I got the bright light on me because I, 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 I... Yeah, it's fine. We're but it's better than here. the old bright light. <laughs> He's dancing. <laughs> He's a disco, disco Dvorak. I want to be a disco Dvorak. New version of the crank of the oh, oh, Tech Grouch is online, by the way. Somebody should check it out. TechGrouch.mevio.com. What is that clown up to now? He is just so grouchy. Hey, I He's had a, a question about the uh, rental SKU. Yes. I I'm sorry. Maybe we're right, on to something else. No, you're bringing us right back to where we ought to be. <laughs> I thought that was John's job. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, no, John's he's turned into the distractor in chief. <laughs> Uh, no, I just wanted to know if any of you guys, either of you guys, knew how much it was going to be. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Mevio seems to have snuck into our feed. Wait a minute. Stop. How do I stop that? There's no stop button. You can turn it off. There you go. There's the tech grouch. Brought to you by Crest. Now that's weird. Wait a minute. A tooth. Does this does the toothpaste company know they're spence, they're sponsoring a guy with no teeth? <laughs> of course not. The guy has no teeth. So it's been reported that some teacher back in Arizona has hooked his computers from the school district up to look for aliens. Now they're claiming 
It cost the school district a million bucks for him to do this. They fired him. But who built for the million? The aliens? Hey. Wait a minute. What is that hanging in his beard? That is not. That's the mic. That is not. That is not. How do you mic a guy like that? It's not that. appetizing. That looks like there's a there's a chunk of food in your. Hey, the still's gonna <laughs> blow up if you keep the heat that high. John, John, don't put the mic in the beard. You put the mic on the shirt, not in the beard. Just a, you know, a little technical. Get tip. off the set. Truth be told, I was listening to that trance music on the iPhone. It wow! I had a trip. Got any suggestions for the show? Send a self-addressed stamp, Beaver, to TechCrouch at Mevio.com. See that sound? That's the microphone in your beard. Ay, ay, ay. Brought to you by Crest. How does yeah, that's Crest. pretty amazing? Mevio gets gets like Procter and Gamble to to do ads. That's pretty. It's great. a good thing. Oh, it's really good. I'm th thrilled. Don't for have you. Ford. Hello. Yeah, happy for you. We don't have Ford anymore either. I had. <laughs> I don't know if it's had anything to do with this, but you know, we had a Ford guy in the show uh, last week at CES. Uh, to be, I wanted him to be on Twit, but I, but I, I probably should have been more clear that if you're on Twit, you know, you can't talk about Ford. You have to be like a geek. And, and and it just ended up being a big ad. So and the chat room was going crazy, saying, "What? what this is like a program like that." So I said, "All right," and I let him go, and we cut it out. And that ever since we don't have any Ford ads. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I think it was the schedule ran out. I do have an Audible ad. They love us. They love us. Audible.com slash twit2. Your chance to get two, not one, but two free books from audible.com. I listen to Audible books all the time. Just started. I'm really enjoying it. Mary, Bra Mary and Bradley uh, Zimmer's The Mists of Avalon. And you do need two books for that one because it's divided up into two parts. It's so long. If you go to audible.com slash twit2 right now, browse around, take a look at all the fantastic books on audible.com 70,000 titles all the best sellers they record a lot of uh, older books that have never been released as audio especially some sci-fi which is fantastic uh, stuff that just was never classics that were just never recorded you could pick two of them any two and uh, make them yours for free go to audible.com slash twit to sign up for the gold account you download these they download in just a minute or two that's another nice thing you know you get a hankering for a book or maybe you're going on a trip soon and uh and you're ready to you know you, you know boy i can't get in that plane without something to listen to Bef you know within a minute or two you can load up your ipod your iphone your zune your kindle your sansa iriver they have a whole device center where you can look and see what devices they support pretty much everything Except for the, I'm uh, sorry to say, except for uh, my droid, my Android phone. But that's coming soon, I'm told. The Audible folks said this year. One of the books I just downloaded, uh, thanks to Tom Merritt, Damon, and Freedom, Daniel Suarez's uh, books. Uh, Tom says they're really great. Damon is a story of a computer demon uh, that solves a murder. Pretty wild stuff. Great choices here. Audible.com slash twit2. Give them a try. You're going to love it. And we thank them so much for their support of our You know who loves show. Audible? Who loves Audible? Mothers. Really? Mothers love Audible. I, I got my mom an iPod a few years ago, and then I got her an Audible account. She it, It's the kind of thing that mothers say, I don't need it. You know, it's I don't really get it. I don't know what it's for. I don't need it. I'm I'm fine. And then a couple of months after that, they come back to you and go like, I can't live without it. Yeah. Yeah, my mom loves audiobooks. She really does. That's actually a very good idea. I get <laughs> I get mom a couple of things, a Netflix account, she loves that, audio books, and she and I got her an internet radio and she's loving that. So you know Rob Glazier probably pretty well, John C. Dvorak, former CEO, founder of Real Networks. 16 and also the guy who bought the Professional Bowling Association. Did he really? Yep. You kidding? stock and barrel. He made his money at Microsoft, right? He was a Microsoft guy for a long time. Yeah, he was, but I think he really made most of his money with real networks and the because the, I think they, I don't know, they got a lot of money. 
in 2000, well, re, he was been at Real for 16 years, created the Real Player, which was kind of the bane of the internet. Everybody, hates, I mean, some say the most hated program uh, <laughs> on the internet. I would be in that camp. I, it, it'd I have would to be, agree to It'd have yeah. to be close to that, right? Because it's just yeah. downloaded so much crap on your computer. And it, was a, it wasn't a great audio format. I'm so glad we've gotten away from it and gone to MP3. And every once in a while, I'll browse to an old website, like uh, Old Time Radio or um, yep. uh, Audio Air Checks. And the guys did everything in real audio. And it's like you just go, oh, please, no, no, please. <laughs> well, luckily, if you have that video land program, it'll play the real the, the real audio stuff, and then it'll also convert it. It just sounds so bad, though. So bad. And remember Bonzi, Bonzi Buddy? Yeah, it was just terrible. But it was, you know, to be fair, uh, from an earlier era where people didn't have the bandwidth. You needed something that could, could stream audio in, in very low-quality bandwidth and video, too. In 2005, That's true, but it wasn't the problem, right? Sorry. Well, the problem what, was what? That it was a lot of crapola that you got when you got yeah, the real player. Yeah, the, the program when you downloaded it and installed it, you pretty much said goodbye to half your hard drive and computer, you know, CPU cycle. Right. And it really was started to go downhill for real when MP3s became popular, and then in 2006 when YouTube emerged. That's it. <laughs> that, yeah. that put the nail in the coffin. Fortunately. Uh, Real had sued uh, Microsoft, and for a billion dollars, they settled. When Microsoft agreed to pay Real seven hundred sixty-one million dollars in cash and services, and promote Rhapsody on the MSN network, Real owns Rhapsody. So uh, that that kind of set Real up for life. I mean, that's it, you know. Um. Real got in kind of trouble last year when they released something called Real DVD, which I thought was a really great second act for Real. It was DVD copyright copying software, but it but it had some stuff to protect the studios. Like you couldn't copy a movie; you had to keep the copy. You could only make one copy. It was it was, it was kind of thing you would have thought the studios would have said, "Yeah," and I'm sure that's what Rob thought. They sued. It was the the example of fair use, respecting right. fair use, right. in the software. And of yeah. course, the movie industry has no, uh, you know, no leeway for this. So Rob has resigned. He's leaving. Uh, we don't know why he's leaving. Um, I think we, we got his bowling average up. <laughs> does he still own the PBA? Yeah, as far as I know, he does. Wow, that's interesting. Him and a few partners, they got together. They bought it for next to nothing. Well, sure. How much could the PBA be worth? <laughs> well, you know, at one point in the, some time ago. In the I 50s. During the era when Grant's Tomb was the number one tourist attraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the PBA uh, bowling was the most popular sport on television. I don't see you as a bowler. I see you as a candle pin kind of guy. You know, I've done candle pins. Man, that is one hard game. Yeah, that's the challenging. That's the bowling for people who really are serious. Ugh. Oh. Those little candle pins, they are hard to knock down. If you get the strike ever, it's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> the best one, by the way, if you want to play these crazy rolling a ball game. Yeah. Rubber band ducks. I never heard of it. Where do they play that? Is that Wisconsin? They played it back east in some couple. I think in Massachusetts yeah. you can find some rubber band ducks. Rubber because band duck ducks. Pins. Yeah. Yeah, they're called rubber band ducks. They're duck pins, but they got a rubber b band around the middle, big thick thing, so they bounce all over like crazy. And uh, it's actually quite a, kind of a fun game. And then there's a game up in Canada called Five Pin Bowling. Wow. Which is actually quite difficult. And, of course, then there's a regular duck pins. I think there's a couple other ones. And most people who are ever bowlers, they've always tried to go out of their way to play these other crazy games. Duck pins are shorter and squatter than the regular pins used in 10-pin bowling, according to Wikipedia. Oh, they are. They're little. And then you yeah, use a the, little ball. Rubber band ducks. You got, I don't know if they mentioned them in there, but rubber band ducks is very obscure. There's only a few places left that have them. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Rubber band duck pins introduced in the Baltimore, or I'm sorry, Balmer, Washington area. The pins are circled with hard rubber bands to increase action and scoring. Rubber band duck pin is the only version of duck pin played in the province of Quebec. Ah, right. There you go. That's where I played it. Quebec. Obscurities for everybody. It's not France, but it sounds like it. <laughs> um, I think we've uh, have we covered all the stories. Can't be, you know, the Google's so dominated. What uh, about okay. the Apple's Kodak suing Apple? Oh 
wow, this is, you know, Apple's suing Nokia. Nokia's suing Apple. In fact, the latest is that Apple is suing Nokia to keep them from shipping any products in the U.S. at all. <laughs> yeah, the good luck with that. At all. It's like, no, sorry, uh, you, you're no longer allowed. And now Kodak sues Apple and RIM saying the technologies that you use to display images on your digital cameras and computers violates our patent. That's uh, ridiculous. Well, well, wait a minute, though. Wait a minute. Because I don't know enough, but wait a minute. Other, Listen, who's yeah, paying but, royalties? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. LG, Motorola, Nokia, Samsung, and Sony Ericsson all pay Kodak royalties. And and for for what for technology for previewing different uh, uh, images of different resolutions and another as ridiculous I mean okay it, the patent thing is completely out of control although I don't know maybe there is some <laughs> it technology. is is it it's, it's 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 this is a U.S. issue though isn't it I mean you don't have these problems in France uh, it doesn't feel like it no, no. Not we sue well, at the drop of the like hat. Kodak. An imaging company inv really essentially invented the digital camera and a lot of other stuff. Ah. So tons of patents. Ah. I I just love how in America, if you if you you know you're having trouble competing, well, just sue them. <laughs> you can just it works. It's, a, it's oh, the second choice, you know. The origin of it is the patents that are being awarded. So um, you right know, with no basis, right? Right. I mean, uh, this is this goes back to that. Google phone story about Apple asking Google, please don't put multi-touch in. We don't want to have to defend this patent because the multi-touch patent that Apple has is absurd. I mean, there's, there's, you know, people have been looking at multi-touch for years, long before Apple even considered it. Yep. Um, airlines are rolling out Wi-Fi. I used Wi-Fi uh, on Virgin uh, America when we flew to Vegas and back. Very slow, not all that usable. Certainly not. You couldn't use Skype, but you could check your email. Normally, it'd be about twelve ninety five, but uh, in this case, Google paid for it. And I, and I have to say, the first thing you see is an ad for the Nexus One phone before you get to use your Wi Fi. It's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. Company that does this is GoGo, -Go, which is a product of Aircel. Aircel is the leading internet airline provider. Uh, American Airlines started it. GoGo -Go will be offered soon on American, Delta, AirTran, Virgin America already, United Air Canada, U.S. Airways, Continental. Southwest Airlines is working with another ro provider, Row 44, to put Wi-Fi. So basically, you're not going to be able to get on an airplane and say, I'm out of touch. Yeah, if they're going <laughs> to let you use the laptop first. with all these new TSA regulations. Have they... They backed down a little bit on that, I hope. Yeah, so far. That, yeah, it's not going to take much to get them back on. No. So Continental is experimenting with, uh, they have a live in-flight television system, which is something, you know, it's been around for a while on uh, JetBlue. Uh, and then also on the same planes, they're going to put GoGo, -Go, the Wi-Fi. How does it work? Is it Does it have like a satellite relay? Or? That's a good question. I don't know. They go through a satellite relay, yes. Uh, they shoot up. Okay. Yeah, you'd have to because otherwise the handoffs from ground on the ground to ground at 600 miles an hour would be crazy. So they're going up, not down. But I'll tell you, satellite internet's up. terribly slow. Awful. Yeah, there's well, a big I, latency. I, it's, it's, it's miserable. Yeah. yeah. Not a good I choice. used it uh, on a flight from Los, Ange Los Angeles to uh, San Francisco. It, it worked okay. You know, I didn't expect it to be ADSL quality, but... Allows you to do email. I even sent a video, an iPhone video. Really? Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. You know, I Maybe got a Skype was, call you know. from. I'm sorry, I got a Skype call from someone from the Lufthansa flight that was all online in the plane. And Lufthansa it sounded had, fine. Yeah, Lufthansa had faster internet, and I used it on a, a, a SAS flight some years ago. It was very fast. So maybe it, it, yours was slow because Google was offering it free, so everyone <laughs> everyone was, was using it. I think well, well of course it's, it was. Wait a minute, especially from CES. Yeah, this is a plane tri trip to CES from San Francisco. Every yeah. single <laughs> seat, they're opening up a laptop, getting online. What, what am I thinking? Of course it was slow. I'm surprised it worked at all. <laughs> so Gawker, I love Gawker's balls. These guys, uh, they oh, got that was beautiful. These guys, so they they Valley Wag, which is their you know Silicon Valley gossip site, offered a hundred thousand dollars 
to be granted uh, to, it was a scavenger hunt, to anybody who provides an Apple tablet to the Gawkers and lets them play with it for an hour. $50,000 for a picture of Steve Jobs holding an Apple tablet. But ironically, uh, the best proof they got was from Apple's legal team, which sent him a cease and desist email saying, quote, you should not solicit for photos, videos, or a sample of an unannounced and highly confidential Apple product. In effect, <laughs> confirming the existence of the tablet. You know, I think Apple really made a huge mistake here, and I'll tell you why. I don't understand why Apple didn't give them a picture and then have a picture of Steve and then collect $150,000 <laughs> and put it in the coffers. What's wrong with that? You know, so they get a lot of free publicity. They kind of gave the uh, lawyers at Apple a second prize of sending them a DVD of Legally Blonde 2, a $25 Zoom Marketplace <laughs> gift card, and a fabulous set of steak knives. <laughs> I love it. Nick Nick knows how to how to how to work it. That's you, you got to say that for him. That's yeah, you got great. a lot of PR for that. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Now, can they get in trouble uh, for soliciting that? I don't think so. I think that's I think that's that I think that's a, a gray area. I think it's sketchy. I think it's just a it's a, bad a bluff. journalistic practice. But I don't think it's illegal to say I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars to break your NDA. Is it? Uh, I, I don't. Well, I don't you know, see I think how NDA should be illegal. Well, why are you? How does anybody sign away their constitutional rights with a contract? Right. I mean, if if an NDA is legal, why can't I just go to Africa and find some, let's say, black people, and have them sign away their constitutional rights in a contract? Come work and for they, me. Then they're the, they're slaves. Yeah, come work for me. I won't pay you. You 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 oh. sign the deal. It's in the shrink wrap. I yeah. mean, it, it just, when is this going to end? It's bogus. McDonald's is now offering free Wi-Fi in its restaurants. They did this before, but I guess it's back. So they now with your this in France forever. Now with your what is it? Your Grande Royale. The Royale de Luxe Royale. Royale de Luxe Royale. It yeah. sounds much better when you say it that way. Well, you get that. Oh, yeah, and so it's a, such it's, a nice place to do your computing because of the, the, the beautiful grease. aromas. <laughs> you, you know, I, I swear, even, even a hard plastic computer, even an aluminum body, unibody computer can absorb hamburger odor in half an hour. We have, we'll have people, and nobody, I, and nobody in this room, but we'll, I'll have people uh, come in here after they go down the road and have breakfast. We have a little place that has hash browns and... And they just reek of hash browns. And, and and I just go, you were at Hallie's, weren't you? And they go, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, I could smell it. And But McDonald's is so much worse. Oh, you're making me hungry now. Oh, you want a deluxe royale. It sounds so good. Doesn't that sound good? Oh. That's why we like it. Because oh, yeah, it, in deluxe. our language, it sounds really good. Everything sounds better in French. <laughs> it just all sounds, even a French fry sounds better in French. Frites. Frites, pommes frites. So, uh, yes, Patrick, tell us, do what is your super secret new project? <laughs> uh, well, it's not really super secret, but um, a, a few friends, uh, podcasters, and myself, we've been sort of uh, getting together for a while. I tried to rally the pod podcasting energies in France uh, for a little while and uh, a few of them actually are making it better and faster than I am and uh, we're sort of uh, getting together and putting a, a, a portal for uh, video podcasts and another one for uh, audio podcasts. Is it called Votre uh, so Tube? <laughs> It's called No Watch, uh, No Watch TV for videos and No Watch FM for audio. So it's just a splash page for the audio now. But uh, the first version, very uh, preliminary version of the website, is up for the video thing. And uh, No Watch TV is the place to go for if you want uh, any French podcast from now on. Uh, oh TV, dear, yeah, no I, I think you've got some American, uh, you know, French in here, Franglish. It says, no watch.tv, incredible web shows. <laughs> Attention, super production. You, you, you read it exactly right. That's <laughs> super production. <laughs> and I see it says, geeks, geeks at tesh. What is that? I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> well, here, under scuds. Geeks, scuds? Oh, geeks. at tesh. Geeks. geeks at tesh. Yeah. 
geek à tête chercheuse. It's basically a homing... Uh, homing pigeon. De homing head. Ge geeks? Searching head. Because of, Ger yeah. Geeks search for head. Something like that. Yes. That's exactly what it is. Scuds so there's TV. There's a few, uh, a few cool. shows over there. Um, this is good. That are pretty good, uh, good quality shows. And uh, we're going to go forward from there and uh, together. With, is it, it's, uh, a, it's all in I French though, right? Yes, absolutely. It's a hub. It's a hub for French uh, web shows and uh, absolutely. So, does absolutely. Geek Inc. podcast mean yep. mean Geek, what the Geek. same thing in French as it means in English? It does. Geek Inc. is a, a podcast about uh, Geek, Geek culture uh, cool. in French, yeah. and it's uh, super fun and super cool. Cool. Well, I think that's yeah. good. Is there is there a, a a large podcasting community, or is this kind of nascent? Well, it it really was. Uh, just me until a year ago, <laughs> honestly. Um, I guess that would be the definition I'm, I'm, of nascent. I'm exaggerating yeah. a little bit, but um, until a year ago, it was basically just me. And uh, they started doing stuff a year ago. And these guys, the the, the Scuds uh, guys, uh, have been taking it to the next level and have been organizing all this uh, pretty uh, pretty well. Uh, so now we're all uh, together. Kevin Rose. This, uh, it looks just like Dignation. Uh, only Alex got really old. Oh, this is like a they're they're a bunch of uh, kind of famous people in France, and they're just doing a spoof intro for the other. It ones. is a spoof of Dignation, though. It oh well, you know the 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 seminal formula of a podcast is uh, two guys in a in a couch now, right? <laughs> I guess um, it is. But Kevin <laughs> Kevin would be so honored by that. That's great. There's a there's a little bit of this on some shows. Some uh, have a different formula. Um, but um, yeah, it's basically uh, the beginning of a wonderful uh, adventure of podcasting. Nowatch.tv. That's great. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Thanks. Yeah, the aim is really to to get Nowatch.tv and Nowatch.fm uh, to be the two central hubs for podcasting. So hopefully it will go well. well Congratulations. See. Well done, Patrick. And of course, still Frenchspin.com for Patrick's Absolutely. podcast in English, the Phileas Club, and in, and, yeah. and in French, in both. There are a couple of things uh, in English, a couple in French. Uh, How would you say like, the tech grouch in French? <laughs> I, I'm afraid I, I would anger him, so I wouldn't translate it. Le jongleur du technologie, or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Technology. Le fou. <laughs> Le hmm. grouch is difficult to to translate. Yeah, because nobody's grouchy in France. <laughs> We're all happy. <laughs> no, there's no such thing as a like, no, okay, there you rude. Go. Be, you could use the word rude. There's a, there's a few rude people in France. No, I, I love French. I love France. It would be the, I love the, the tech rude. The tech. Um, no, yeah. it would be grincheux. Le, 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 tec, le technophile grincheux or something like that. I like that. that. Wow, that sounds, John, sounds great. Yeah, that's what you should be, John. I think you should change the name. I didn't say you. I mean, whoever the grouch might be. No, the grouch. He's a cousin, distant cousin. Distant cousin with with a looks like a squirrel in his beard. John C. Dvorak is at channeldvorak.com. He's also uh, the host of um, numerous shows, including Cranky Geeks at crankygeeks.tv, uh, No Agenda, and Tech Five. Somebody said yeah, I should ask you what Adam Curry thought about this whole China Google thing. Uh, we know we didn't talk the China Google thing. Yeah. We talked mostly about Haiti today, and they'll be posting later today. The, oh, he uh, does have a theory on the Haiti thing. Oh, yeah. Does he think Pat Robertson caused it? No, that's the Pat Robertson thing was quite funny. We did Jeez. go over that quite oh, a bit. Man. Somebody mentioned to me that the problem with the Pat Robertson thing is that somebody said Hades. Oh, he got confused. He thought no, Haiti just, was it's Hades. Joke. It's a joke. So, um, no, but does, no, is there I, a conspiracy Adam theory? That there's an earthquake machine and they <laughs> aimed it at Haiti specifically. And then I doubled up on the theory saying that we are actually going to take over the country. Oh, it's about time. That's, That's been a, what my oh, argument was. Haiti's been a thorn in our side for generations. It's just been a, it's been a nuisance. Now we can Ever go in there and take Papa the place Doc over. Duvalier. Yeah. Papa Doc, Baby Doc. Baby Doc. Mama Uncle Doc. Doc. You know that. There's been a, a few issues with uh, the Americans taking uh, responsibility, I know. taking the responsibility of the. We took airport. over the runway. Yeah. Yeah. And they, uh, you so know, a lot of people are saying that the U.S. is going to stay. I have to think. Oh, yeah. Well, it we was are. at the quote invitation of the Haitian government, such as it is. But I have to think that when Secretary Hillary Clinton flies into a country in such turmoil, that she causes far more problems than she solves. Imagine. I mean, that runway must have been closed for hours to, to secure it, to make sure she had a quick getaway. 
That's not a good idea. She has to check in on the property she has in northern Haiti. They're going to build a bunch of hotels up there, and she's going to be uh, she's in part of the deal. It's the next uh, Cuba. Yeah, exactly. You should listen to the show, Leo. We, 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 you and I would agree on this one. All except the earthquake machine. I don't think we perfected that technology. <laughs> but other than that, it was. You know, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. We might look back on this and say, "Yeah, that was the beginning." Yeah. John, thank you. Patrick, thank you. Thank you all for watching. You can watch this show. We do it live every Sunday at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, or that's around, I think, 22. It's midnight uh, UTC, something like that. Uh, and, of course, you can catch it at uh, iTunes or on Zoom. Or just go to twit.tv and uh, download the latest version. We now are on YouTube as well as video starts to come out of our factory uh, we do have video versions of this show as well at uh, youtube.com slash twit or on twit.tv. And I think we are going to have the iTunes feeds any day now. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Another twit is in the can. Doing the twit. Doing the twit.